Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the fourth video in the SDM32 Touch GFX series, and as I mentioned in the previous video, this video will also replace the old video in this playlist. In the previous video we saw how to sample the data from the GUI task, and send the data to the UI via the presenter. As I mentioned in the previous video, this video is going to cover the sampling from another task. I am going to use the same button and potentiometer which I used in the last video, but this time I will use a gauge and the animation, instead of text area and images, that I used in the previous video. Here the same PDF explains how we can sample from another task. We can set the priority of the task higher or lower than the GUI task depending on how time critical the task is. If the task has higher priority than the GUI task, it might impact the frame rate of the UI. Regardless of what method we use for sampling, the tick function is the place where the GUI task becomes aware of the new data to be shown in the UI. We have already seen this in the previous video, and here also we will use the tick function to receive the data from the other tasks. If other tasks are being used, ST recommends the use of inter-task messaging system to send the data to the GUI task. This includes mailbox, message queues etc. We will do the same in this video. Let's start the touch GFX, and create a new project. I am using the STM32 F750 discovery board. Give some name to the project, and click create. Let's add the background image to this project first. I am going to use the gauge to display the ADC values. You can choose from the different presets available here, I am leaving it to default 1. The range of the values is from 0 to 100. Let's set the initial value to 0. That's it for the gauge setup. I am configuring the animated image now. I have here the set of images extracted from a GIF file. Let's add all of them to our project. Now choose the first and the last image of the GIF. I don't want it to automatically start, so uncheck this. Basically this GIF will be controlled by the button, and as long as the button is pressed, the animation will keep running. So the button will control the animation, and the ADC values will update the gauge. Here is the name of this image, animated image 1. That's it for the touch GFX part, let's generate the code now. Go to files now go to project folder, stm32 cube IDE, and open the project in the cube IDE. Let's set up few things in the cube MX first. The button is connected to the pin PI11, so let's set it as the input. I am pulling this pin low, so when the button is clicked, it will be pulled high. Let's configure the ADC. I am using ADC 3 channel 0. The resolution is 12 bit, so the values will vary between 0 to 4000, and 95. I want the conversion rate to be slower so I am setting the maximum sampling time available here. Let's also add the DMA for the ADC conversion. We will see both the methods, where we will sample from another task and send the data to the UI, and also where we use the interrupt and send the data. Configure the DMA in circular mode. The ADC resolution is 12-bit, so an unsigned 16-bit width is required. Let's enable the continuous conversion, and also enable the DMA continuous request. Here the DMA interrupt is enabled, so we are good to go. Let's add the tasks in free RTOS. Here you can see the touch GFX task has the normal priority. So now if your task is very time critical, keep the task priority higher than this. But I don't have such requirements, 
so I will keep the priority lower than normal. So I am adding a button task with low priority. And an ADC task, again with a low priority. Now the task has been created, let's create the queues for inter-task communication. First I am creating the button queue. There is not much data needed from the button, so the queue size of 2 is enough. I will be storing a 1 and a 0 to this queue, so unsigned int is enough. The second queue is for the ADC. Our ADC data is 16 bit in size, so make sure the queue also has the same, or bigger data width. Five items are enough for this, as the conversion rate is anyway slower, and even if the data is lost, it's not a big issue. So this is it for the Cube MX configuration, click save to generate the project. The pins and the connection are the same as what I used in the previous video. The potentiometer is connected via the ADC, and the button is connected to the pin PI11. Let's start writing the main file first. I am creating variables to store the button state, and the ADC value. I am also going to use the same map function from the Arduino source, which I used in the previous video. By the way I have added the Touch GFX series to the website. More tutorials will be updated here soon, as I will make more videos on this topic. Let's write the button task first. Here we will read the pin PI11, and store its value in the button state variable. This value is either going to be a 1, or a 0. I want this task to run every 5 milliseconds. Now after retrieving the button state, we will send the value to the message queue. The ID is the button queue handle, the address of the variable, the priority is lowest. Since I am keeping the timeout zero, the message will be put to the queue only if there is some space available, it will not wait for the space to become available. Now the ADC task. This is going to be the same code we used in the previous video. I want this task to run every 10 milliseconds. After the ADC data has been converted, we will send the data to the ADC queue. Again I am sending the data with zero priority, and zero timeout. Let's build the code once to see if there is any error. Everything seems fine, so let's go ahead. We will first start with the model source file. Let's include the cmsys os2 header file, and main header file. We will be using the ADC and button queue here, so we need to first define them externally. Now we will fetch the data from the queue in the tick function. The OS message queue get count returns the number of messages in the queue, and if there is some message in this ADC queue, we will read the message, and store it in the ADC value variable. We will define this variable in a while. The message priority and timeout are both zero again, so if the message is not available, this function will not wait for it to become available. We will perform the sending operation later, First let's fetch the button data. We will save the queue data to this button variable. Now if the button is equal to 1, the button state variable will be set to true, else it will be set to false. Let's create these variables first. In the model header file, define an integer variable ADC value, and a boolean variable button state. 
Now initialize the variables in the model source file. Now we have the data from the queue, so we will send it to the UI. I have already explained this part in the previous video. We will call the function using the model listener, which is a pointer to the presenter, and send the ADC value as the parameter. Similarly we will send the button state to the presenter using the function set animation. Now we will define the functions in the model listener header file, and the presenter header file. In the source file, the presenter will call the same function in the view. Define the same function in the view header file. Now in the view source file, we will write these functions to display the respective data on the view. The set ADC function will display the ADC value on the gauge. Set the ADC value to gauge 1. And invalidate the gauge, so that the gauge can be updated. Let's write the set animation function. The name of the image is animated image 1. We will first check if the animation is running. If it is not running, and the button is clicked, we will start the animation. The parameters are as follows. If you want to reverse the animation. I don't want to reverse it, so I am setting it to false. The second parameter is if you want to reset the animation. I am setting it to false again. And the final parameter is, if you want to loop it. This is set to true. Now if the animation is already running, and if the button is released, the animation will be paused. So that's it for the IDE, let's build and flash the code to the board. Here you can see the gauge is rotating as I am rotating the potentiometer. The minimum value is 0, and the maximum is 100. Whenever the button is pressed, the animation starts, and when it is released, the animation is also paused. So everything is working as expected. Here we used two different tasks and their data was sent using the message queue to the GUI task. Now we will quickly see how we can also use the interrupt to do the same. I will leave the button task as it is, the ADC will be read using the DMA, and the data will be sent from the interrupt handler. Start the ADC in DMA mode, but make sure you do this inside one of the tasks. This is because we will send the data from the interrupt handler using the queue, and the kernel must be initialized before we send the data, or else we could get a hard fault. The ADC start DMA function takes three parameters, the ADC instance, the pointer to the data storage variable, and the number of conversions. I am using ADC3, we will store the data in ADC val, and there is only one conversion happening. Once this conversion is complete, ADC conversion completed callback will be called. I am using this code from my ADC tutorial. So here we will get the ADC value. Then the map function will convert this value to our range. And now we will send this to the ADC queue. First we will check if there is any space available in the queue, and if there is, put the message in the queue.
Let's build and flash this to the board. Here you can see, the gauge and the button, both are working alright. So you saw how we can use another task to sample the data, and then use the inter task messaging to send this data to the GUI task. I have completed both methods to send data to the UI, as explained in the Touch GFX manual. In the next video, we will see how to send bigger data like strings, or the structure to the GUI task, and then display it on the UI. This is it for this video. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.